City of Charlottesville Sheriff James Brown was horrified after watching the videotaped killing of George Floyd in Minneapolis by policemen. He found it especially bothersome as a black man and someone who has worked in criminal justice for 25 years. You're in law enforcement and you're just kind of wondering what, what folks are doing. We don't have any authorized chokeholds or anything to obstruct people's airways. So when you see that kind of thing, it's just, it's, it's, it's disturbing. Brown has been sheriff for 10 years. He describes his motivation for entering a career in criminal justice by reflecting on one of many poor interactions he had with law enforcement as a young black man. The state trooper was in the median and I saw him. I was in the middle lane, you know, cars are passing me on the left and, you know, we're in the middle lane and everything and doing the speed limit. So uh, as we passed the trooper, this lady went by in a convertible Cadillac just flying. And I saw the trooper pull out and I was like, oh man, watch this, he's gonna get her. So we're, you know, we're sitting in the car waiting for him to go by. And next thing you know, he pulls over behind me and turns his lights on. Next thing I know, he's you know, asking if he can search the vehicle. There's nothing in the car. So, you know, fine, go ahead and search. Um, and so it, I guess maybe about within 10 minutes or so, there were three other state trooper cars. There's, we had four state trooper cars on the side of Interstate 95. They're going through my car, they're taking our clothes out of our bags and dumping them on the interstate, trying to find whatever illegal things they're looking for, and there was obviously nothing there. I just felt humiliated. It was one of the things that, you know, I was studying criminal justice then, but I'm like, I wanted to be involved with law enforcement, make sure people didn't have those types of feelings. I didn't want them to, to have an encounter with law enforcement and feel disrespected. A lot of people of color get scrutinize for the work they do behind the badge. How would you respond to activists and people saying that the entire system is corrupt? People like to overgeneralize other people. Um, and so for me, it's, it's, it's based on your actions. I don't care about anyone's gender, their occupation, uh, political affiliation, religious orientation. It's, 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 it's how you are and who you are as a person. And it's the same thing whether you have a badge on or not. We know not everyone is, you know, not every cop is a bad cop. Activists are calling to defund the police. Mm -hmm. uh, I think everyone's a little bit confused on what defunding is. Um, so from your perspective, is that feasible in Charlottesville? And if so, what does it look like and where would those funds need to go? So there are people that are saying defund the police in the sense of this is how we need to go about, you know, getting rid of a police department, abolishing it and abolishing jails and prisons. Um, but there are a lot of people who look at it in the sense of, I guess, if you do, you know, zero based budgeting where you take a, a take a budget down to zero and then build back up and explain why you need this much money for this, you need this much money for that. So I think also when people say defund the police, it's more of looking at a reallocation of, of resources. And those are the things we're looking at. You know, for me, I look at law enforcement and criminal justice as being on I guess the, the, final, the final step in, in failed systems. You know, if you have adequate housing, if you have ad, adequate education, if you have adequate employment opportunities, if all those things are working, then usually people don't end up in the criminal justice system. So if monies can go towards other things and reduce the need for the criminal justice system, that is, that's a good thing. So do you think uh, defunding in terms of the reallocation of resources is feasible in Charlottesville? Um, I think so. There are calls and things that police are dispatched to that I think could be handled by other agencies. So I'm, you know, I wouldn't be opposed to changing that structure to, to take care of that. Is there reform to be made in police training? And from your perspective, what is that? Um, I think there is. I think there should be more exposure um, to other cultures. Um, so if you don't have community outreach where you're out in a neighborhood and you're, you know, at a park and you're doing stuff with folks, the only time you have interaction with them is when there's a call for service, then you don't have those positive, you know, outlooks on, on things and other people. I know you stepped onto a task force at PVCC um, yeah. kind of to help them get criminal justice education done the right way. So I'm just curious of your motivations in doing so. Well, one of the things that uh, was discovered is that a lot of people that go into law enforcement uh, end up getting an associates in criminal justice from a community college. 
And so being one of the uh, feeders, I guess, into law enforcement, we've been looking at what courses can we add, uh, what things can we change to try to make, you know, a more rounded police officer a deputy so that when they graduate with that degree, they have a little more exposure. Sheriff Brown has always been passionate about issues of social justice regarding law enforcement. He is optimistic for Charlottesville as a community after seeing a younger generation of activists organize protests this summer. You know, you don't have to be a certain age in order to have a voice.